Hey everyone, this is Scott Siemens. I'm a web developer at Interworks, and this is an introduction to views for Drupal 7. So I'm going to run through this as quickly as possible. This is just a brief introduction of the essentials you'll need for views. Views are extremely powerful, and there's a lot of things you can do with them, and I'll try to cover just the essentials here, and then later on I'll try to do some more advanced examples. So if you've been working in Drupal for very long at all, you'll find out that you'll hear a lot about the views module. And the reason is, is it is the most um, popular module for Drupal. I'm going to go ahead and show you. I have a sandbox version of Drupal 7 uh, running on my local host, localhost slash sandbox. And I have already installed views, which you will need to do. And to do that, you'll need to navigate to drupal.org slash project slash views. You'll see down here it has one dependency, and that is the Chaos Tool Suite. So you'll also need to download that at drupal.org slash project slash ctools. So to install these, you need to scroll down to um, downloads and find your appropriate version, 7x or later if you're running Drupal 7. Obviously, if you're running Drupal 6, you'll want the 6x version. And then you'll want to copy the link address of that tar file. Come back to your instance of Drupal and click the Modules button. Click install new module, paste that URL into the install from a URL field, and click install. I've already done it, so I'm skipping that. After you've done that, come over to views and do the exact same thing again. Find your appropriate version of Drupal, copy the tar file link, head on over to your instance of Drupal, paste that link into the install from URL field, and click install. After those are done installing, head back to the modules page. I'm going to minimize the core modules, I'm going to minimize the chaos tools modules, and I'm just going to focus on these views modules here at the bottom. You'll want to check mark the basic views module and the views UI module. Click save configuration. After you've done so, it will prompt you asking you if you want to turn on the chaos tool suite. Click continue and wait for a few minutes, and if everything went okay, you should return to the modules page. It should look something like this. And you'll notice that you have exactly what I have here, some check marked boxes. Um, the Views UI module is important because it gives us our user interface, which is exactly what we'll need for Views. Okay, so let's go ahead and head back to the home page. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a little idea of what I've done here. And I have created some custom content. So if we come to Structure and click on Content Types, I have an additional content type down here called Coworkers that I created. If you need more information on how to create custom content types, Head on over to my man Chris's blog. He's got Drupal 101 custom content types, and it's everything you'll need to know about them for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. I'm going to click Manage Fields in my custom content type, and I'll see here that I added a job title custom field, and I added a photo custom field that allows you to upload an image. Here on the home page, these are all the coworker content type. These are some of the people that I work with. This is Dalton, one of my bosses, my main boss. And uh, here he is riding his bike. It's got a little blurb about him and his name, uh, along with his job title here at the bottom. It says Director of Web Strategy. I have that for everyone. I got Chris, Javad, and then myself. So this isn't very exciting. I want to mix up how I can display this data. That's what views are for. It's a way to do that without writing a single line of code if you don't want to. That's what makes it so wonderful, and that's what makes Drupal such an awesome platform. So. Come to structure, click on views, so you'll notice that you have a new views option here in the structure. And this is what Drupal views looks like by default, as soon as you install it out of the box. There's a whole bunch of great template views in here. And this is basically templates for you to work off of. You can open them up, turn them on, see how they work, see how they're set up. Uh, it's wonderful just to go through these and see exactly kind of how they're configured. And it gives you an idea of how to configure your own module or your own views later on. But right now I'm going to click a new view. I'm going to name it Coworkers since that's what I'm dealing with. You can give it a description if you want. I'm not going to. Sometimes it is really handy though when you have lots and lots of views that are very similar. I want to show content. You have a few options, but I want to show content of type Coworkers. That is the custom content type that I created. And then sorted by newest first. But you have a few options here. I want to create a page. Uh, the page is already titled for me, but I can change it if I want. Um, since this is a page, it needs a URL path, and it has one of coworkers. Now I'm going to choose the display format. This is how the data is going to be presented. 
Now this is pretty cool because I could display it in a table or a jump menu or a list or a grid. Uh, unformatted list though is going to be the most popular choice because then you can go back and style it however you want. It's pretty awesome. So right now I'm going to display a list of teasers. Or actually let's do full posts. So we're going to display everything there is to display and then I'll go back and I'll show you how to just show bits and pieces of it. I don't want them to be able to add comments to it, users to add comments to it, but I do want to keep links to the individual nodes um, with the read more link. I have to display, we only want to display five. Um, we'll use the pager if we have more people than that eventually. If we add more coworkers to the list, it'll automatically add pagination for us. It's pretty cool. We can click this create a menu link item for us and this will automatically add coworkers to our main menu. I'm going to pass on the RSS feed for now. But I am going to create a block, and this block is going to be called Coworkers, and it's going to be nothing more than an unformatted list of titles that are linked back to the node. But you'll see, again, you can put entire full posts or teasers into this display. Items per block, five, use a pager, I'm going to not use a pager for that, and then I'm going to save and exit. So this is pretty awesome. We have this brand new page called Coworkers. It's got a title, it's got the co-worker's name here that's linked back to his individual node. We have their photo, we have their description, and here we go, we've shown everyone. We have Chris, we have Javad, we have me, job titles included, it's got everything. It's just so extremely powerful that just in a few clicks, we've set all of this up. Here on the left, you'll notice we've got this co-worker's block, Dalton, Chris, Javad, Scott, by default, this block usually isn't already there. I'm going to go ahead and click on blocks. Usually it's disabled, but I have enabled it just for a test run, so it's still enabled now. But if you don't see that block, that's okay. Just come down here to blocks, and then come down to disabled, and you'll see this view coworkers, and it should say none. But mine is in the sidebar first already, because I did run a quick test trial just to run through it real fast, So and it's already there. So um, that's all there is to it. We've created two views. Let's go ahead and try to configure our views real fast. So let's not say, you know, what really makes it powerful is we don't want to show all that content. We just want to show some of the content. So we click on views. You can see the new one that we added called coworkers. It's um, in dark, bold text because it's active. We'll click edit. So instead of showing all the content, we just want to show certain fields. So we'll click that and click apply to all displays. Now when we click apply to all displays, that means it's going to apply to the blocks field and it applies to the page or I'm sorry, the block display and the page display. Your displays are displayed across here at the top. You have the page display and a block display. Down here we have a preview. So this is what we're seeing right now in the page display. We're just getting Dalton, Chris, Javad, and Scott. Here's our fields that we're displaying. We're only displaying the content title. I know this is extremely overwhelming at this point, but really just trial and error is the best way to get through all of this. Uh, just kind of go through and experiment and see what everything does. So I'm going to go ahead and add another field, and I want to add the job title. So I'm going to search for job title, and there it is. And I don't want to apply this to all displays. I want to apply this to this page only. So we add field to this page only, and we override the block field. And I don't want to create a label for it. So now we've got a title and we've got a job title. If we scroll under our preview, you can see Dalton is director of web strategy. Chris, Javad, and I are all web developers. And we haven't written a single line of code and we pulled all this information. And you can imagine if you had a huge content type with tons of different fields, how powerful this would be. Let's add another one. Let's add the photo. So I'll just type in photo. That's what I named the field and the custom content type. And we again want to, oh, I'm sorry, just apply it to this page only. And apply. And actually, I want to make sure that there's not a label, so I'm going to remove the label. You have a lot of options there, and I don't have time to cover them all. But like again, this is just an essential course to get you started. So now we have Dalton, director of web strategy, and his photo. We have Chris, we have Javad, we have me. That is a wonderful picture of Chris. Let's just focus on that for like one second. Okay, so save that. And now when we come out here. This is the home page. This is your basic feed. Click on coworkers. Now we have an entirely different view of the exact same information. Here on the left, we still have the exact same block because we overrode all the changes that we made. 
and that's your brief introduction. There's one more thing that I'm going to do, and I'm actually going to change the sorting order. Structure, views, coworkers, edit. And under sort criteria, right now it's sorting by post date, and I want to remove that. And I want to add a new one, and I want to do it by title, alphabetically. And I want this to apply to all displays. So this change will affect both the block display and the page display. And I want to sort it ascending, apply to all displays. So now we have Chris at the top, Dalton, Javad, and me, alphabetically. It's important for Chris to be at the top of all of these. Here we are on our homepage again, click Coworkers. There you have it. Now we've sorted them. So it's so easy to make changes. It's so easy. They're so flexible. Uh, I really just wanted to cover a brief introduction. I'm going to try and do a lot more of these with uh, more complicated examples, but you have to get started somewhere, so we'll start here. Uh, if you have any ideas of anything you'd like me to do or would like to see, please let me know, and I'll see if I can't set up a tutorial for it.